Say hello to my little friend. Spiky bits. Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and we've got new Necrons. Yay! Well, since the last new Necrons, and Indominus. Yay! <laughs> so well, today we're gonna unbox and build the Locus Heavy Destroyer in the Canoptic. Doomstalker, Doomstalker. Uh, these are both easy to build kits uh, that we saw on their website. However, uh, and he's not gonna be in this video, but the Silent King is not. He's easier to build, which I like to, um, coin. I'd like to coin that phrase if it's available. Um, they're not, it's not traditional multi-part. It's actually, e it actually is easier to build um, with a combination of the, you know, peg holes and slots, but not necessarily push fit where you don't have to use glues. But these guys are push fit and you don't have to use glue. So uh, the Doomstalker is $40 US and the Heavy Destroyer is $35. Uh, and of course, you can always get your hobbies for less from dicehead.com or Amazon. We'll put the links uh, in the description and the first comments uh, below somewhere down there. Anyways, uh, let's let's start with the locust real quick. So let's open up this bad boy here and see how many sprues we get. So one sprue. So one big sprue. Okay, cool. And instruction manual and we got 60 mil base. Ooh, another centerfold fold out. Look at that. Ooh, yeah. So this kit... Uh, well, it goes together, left and right. It's got a little front piece, a little armor piece on. Seems pretty straightforward. Thruster jets have little wire things that lock into the top right there. Nothing too crazy. Clamshell uh, armor plates over the top look pretty neat. And then it, whoop, we're skipping ahead. Uh, so those clamp, those, those centerfolds always get me excited. Uh, front, oh, this is interesting. It's a little assembly here. So we got uh, back piece, armor piece, spine piece, and then two arms that lock into there. And then, oh, choice of head, we like that, okay. And then choice of gun as well. So the guns look to go together. Left half, no shared parts, so they can be separate it looks like. Yep, left and right half, and little front thruster thing. Little wire that locks in from the spine. Okay, I think there's another arm. Oh yeah, there is another arm. So a third arm, third arm, locks into the, and it holds the side here and holds the weapon up. And then this peg right here probably goes into the rocks and choice of rocks and or burnt skulls and choice of weapon. But it looks like you could probably switch it out too. So let's find out. One fat Necron sprue. Fat, fat bottom, just I don't know. I was trying to make a joke, but anyways. <laughs> so this kit, it's there's not much to it. This is not, it's just left and right half. This is what we saw on Games Workshop's website. Saw some slots and some holes and things. We're like, hey, wait a minute, maybe this is the ETB. It turns out, boom, is the ETB. So again, ETB is great because you're not gonna have to shave any mold lines, which is really really cool. Except for maybe right there, yep, right there on that piece. So any place that's a front and back half, you won't. But every now and again, like on the spine and this uh, these legs right here, you will have to. But it's way less than normal, of course. Uh, Detail-wise, looks great. And I'm not seeing. I like the I like the uh, not just the flat space here, like on the old destroyers for like the last million years or so. Uh, that definitely looks cool. And they got a lot going on with this. Uh, plenty of opportunity to do some uh, highlight and shading and OSL and all sorts of things going on there. I don't know. I think that was that part that goes in the front. There's the wire from the back uh, spine area. Oh, right there. So it locks in. Very cool. So doesn't look to be much to this. Let's uh, see how fast it takes us. And we're back. So that actually took about five minutes to cut, to cut out and uh, uh, kind of push fit together. A little bit of confusion here, like when that whole assembly of the uh, middle back piece, the armor piece and the spine piece, you have to lock that in over the actual spine piece in the front here. It's a little weird. Um, and it just follow the instructions. I didn't really uh, look at it close when we were just looking at them, but this, you don't want to put the head on, so you have to really line it up and then you push fit the front torso. It, 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 it works, it just takes a little bit. And then if you want to switch out the weapon, you just unplug that wire right there. You unplug this arm, which actually doesn't really kind of lock in very well. Uh, this is just slotted in and this back piece right here is just slotted in. I swear it's just slotted in this little hand, this little grabby hand. Uh, oh, I'm starting to get crazy here. I'm starting to 
pull arms and uh, heads off. That really is frustrating. I don't know why it's doing that. It just slotted right in. Hmm. Maybe it's trapped. I'm gonna take a closer look. So it turns out there's a little nub in there and you can't slide it out. I didn't realize that was the case. So I pushed it in and then it got stuck. Um, and then you can't really pull it out. So <laughs> if you are gonna switch out the weapon, which it is doable 100%, you just have to uh, cl kind of clamshell it in. So here's that other weapon and I'm just gonna peel this apart if I can figure out where it peels apart. There it is. So we're just gonna peel this apart. I'll try to destroy things. And fell very well at it. Oh, okay, that's why I was trying to pull it all the way out the back there. Okay, so now we put this on here and... Oh, I see, it's just designed to push in. Okay, that's kind of clever. So if you do want to change it, you will have to Let's see. Yep, okay, that's what it is. So I didn't realize when I slotted that in, it wouldn't slide back out. Got him. All right, well, very tricksy, but I like it. Um, oh, his face came off too. So this is, you just have to be a little careful, you know, maybe glue a couple of these pieces, but uh, if you do want to switch out the weapons, you won't necessarily have to glue that down. And then everything kind of goes together to kind of lock the gun, like this little wire back here slots in oh does it not slot into this one hmm. i guess it doesn't slot into that one that particular one so you don't need the hose for that and then this arm goes back over here like this and his face falls off we're just having a time of it but i swear to you that this just pops in maybe it doesn't for this one Oh, maybe I'm doing it wrong. So the ball joint goes in here, okay. Yay, we did it, victory. Okay, so there's how, wow, that was, that was a lot. Okay, so you don't need this for that. All right, cool. So he just hefts it around like it ain't no thing and there's no power supply uh, needed. Now there is a little bit of movement in the waist area. So you can kind of do your PPUs if you really want to. Uh, but I'd be very careful about that. And switching this out, you know, it, you're gonna have to squeeze it and get that really locked in. So I think this is probably one of those kits, if you don't wanna play Jumanji every five seconds, like I'm doing right here, that you're really gonna wanna glue some of this down. It's cool that it's easy to build, but I would almost consider this kit, even though it's traditional ETB, uh, just straight easier to build because these parts being glued down, even to switch out the weapon, would be super more helpful than what I just went through right there. Now, size-wise, uh, he is on a 60 mil base, but you can tell he kind of looks a little small on a 60 mil base. So here's a 60 mil base with uh, the crypt, uh, the um, Scorpec Lord, and you can see it kind of towers over him. So this, if I had to guess, I would say this is actually smaller than the current Destroyer model that's out there or well, the old Destroyer model. I don't even know if they sell those anymore, but definitely smaller than the old Destroyer, which is kind of shocking if you think about it. Um, but yeah, that's it. So great kit, very, goes together very well, but you definitely want to consider using some glue on this one for sure. And up next is the Doomstalker. So this guy looks to be very interesting uh, in and of itself because it is, seems to be, because generally these are, you know, 100% uh, to scale when they put it on the back here big like if that's real if that's the size of it we're just pretty big on the inside you're gonna get two sprues it looks like mostly weapons and legs on this one and carapace and little creepy shooter pew pews on that one instruction manual which we can keep right there in a base and i'm wondering how big that base is 90 millimeters okay so uh, there you go wow this is a little, like a one page instruction check that out so Looks like a left and right half for the uh, top of the, we'll call him a tripod. I know he's not a tripod, but in my mind, it's a tripod. And left and right half for the big uh, pew pew laser gun and a left and right half to the pew pew laser gun armor that slots into here at the bottom of the pew pew pilot, which probably isn't a pilot. And then some armor plating, cause why not? Legs, uh, 
go together pretty straightforward. It looks like a little armor piece to uh, hold that closed and complete that circuit. And then it looks like it just goes right on top of the legs. I don't know. Can it really be that easy? Like, holy cow, that's that's pretty nuts. Okay, so let's see. So here's a first sprue, and it look they look pretty similar. Look, there's another taco cat there. It's the same way, frontwards and backwards if you spell it. And then that, that's that crazy big long hook together plate stuff. I don't know. Is that his eyeball? Who knows? And then over here we got uh, pew pew lasers, big feet. All the way around, little train piece. Uh, that's his front face, I think. Oh, and there's where his face locks into uh, the front of this thing, probably somewhere. I don't know. It can't be that hard. Let's let's just put it together. So yeah, this this is a big boy. He's a big boy. So here he is. Uh, this this is pretty cool to be quite honest. Now he doesn't actually slot into his base very well, unfortunately. Um, so I'm not gonna really show you that but trust me that he fits on here he just won't stay put um well i guess he goes the other way either way whatever i forget which way he goes but i did want to mention that uh when it comes to some of this pre-made terrain if you wanted to kind of um mesh out your base i don't know if you saw my space marine unboxing or even when that's going to go out but i did want to mention that there's this really cool stuff that you can buy uh it's called resin sand it's by liquitex and what it what it does is you put it down on this base and it's going to build up a nice layer around all this terrain so it looks like the terrain is actually part of the texture into the base itself uh it doesn't it doesn't shrink it doesn't recede and it's very easy to paint on like right here i actually did this with a gw base and it looks like those little resin bits from microart studios are part of the base itself because I just built up one single layer all over it. And then, you know, just hit it with the airbrush, do a little dry brushing and boof, we're good to go. But, uh, so that's my suggestion there if you wanted to build that up uh, with some texture, but you might be using resin bases or what have you. This guy's pretty cool. You know, he comes right off the base so you can kind of swallow him and do pee-pews or make a little hover duder, whichever. These uh, armor panels, they're, they're kind of tough to keep on, but they will stay on if you really mash them together, but you might want to glue those down after you uh, maybe paint them separately. The little uh, blue glowy power source in here would be really cool to kind of uh, object source highlight. But other than that, I think, um, you know, you can you can do a lot with this, but there's also is it's also very simplistic too, right? Because this this is super simple and you can do all sorts of things with this, like depending on what kind of armor scheme you're going with and, uh, and color scheme and such. But let's see, I think it's supposed to go this way. And you got a little bit of range of motion with your pew pews. Now, this actually sizes up really hilariously to uh, the other one that came out in the Indominus box. So way bigger, which we, we kind of saw in the preview video, but it wasn't clear if there was like a distance trick or not. But it turns out, yeah, he's definitely definitely way bigger this is a 60 mil base and such and then this is how he compares to uh the score peck lord so very cool very cool model um again he isn't you know i say he isn't that much but uh for 35 bucks oh no excuse me he's the 40 dollars one the heavy destroyer is the 35 dollars one um it doesn't i don't know i'm, I'm kind of okay with that price so etb or no etb let me know what you think in the comments below thank you very much for watching uh, don't forget, you can always get your hobbies for less from Dicehead.com or, of course, Amazon. We'll put links to that in the comments and, of course, below in the description, too. But before you go to buy your own or, you know, go somewhere else or click next, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos.